In this last topic, I want to look at inverse trigonometric functions. Here we're just going to limit our discussion to the sine function. Now, you may immediately think that, well, if I'm going to look at an inverse of a trig function, well, inverse functions only apply to functions that are one-to-one, -one, and we already know that trig functions aren't one-to-one. -one. So, is that it? Is that end of discussion? Trig functions aren't one-to-one, -one, so they shouldn't have inverses. So this is not one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't have an inverse. Okay, this was our sine of x. Okay, well, remember that we were able to restrict the domain, though, of the trig function to get a one-to-one -one function. So what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the domain. What's our restriction on the domain? Well, we're now just going to look at the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. And there is our sine function restricted to that domain. And now this is one to one. So it does have an inverse. The inverse is what we're going to call arc sine. We typically denote it by sine uh, with a negative one as a superscript, or arc sine. And what do we know about this? Well, what's the domain of it? The domain of arc sine. Well, that would have been the range of the sine function. And the range of the sine function is from negative 1 to 1. So the domain arc sine is from negative 1 to 1. What's the range of our arc sine? Well, it would have been the domain of the sine function. So that's negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. And how do we get its graph? Well, let's sketch the graph down here below the actual written out definition. What we do is we take the graph of the sine function, the restricted sine function, and we reflect it about the line y equals x. So it looks something like this. So here, now we have negative 1 to 1, and it goes from negative pi by 2 up to pi by 2, and that's our y equals arc sine of x, which is also denoted by sine inverse of x. Now there was nothing special about this restriction. All I did was said, okay, I've got a sine function. Um, I want to get a piece of it that's one to one. So I've taken this piece here from negative pi by two to pi by two. There was nothing special about that piece. We could have taken any piece we wanted and constructed the corresponding uh, restricted function and then the corresponding inverse. So in this case, there are lots of possible choices for the inverse sine function. Typically, this is the one that's most used just because we're going to center at zero. Seems natural to restrict the function so it's centered at zero just due to symmetry and go with this. But you will notice that for the other trig functions, cosine, tangent, uh, secant, cosecant, cotangent, there may be some choices that you can't really sort of say, well, that's better than that one. Maybe uh, continuity or symmetry of how you've restricted it will come into play before you take the inverse. So you just have to be aware that different people sometimes take different restrictions for their domain so that it's one-to-one -one before they take an inverse. And so the inverse one textbook uses may not be the same as another textbook, may not be the same that Wolfram Alpha uses. So you just need to be careful that you know what restriction has been taken on the original trig function and what inverse function is being used. So here's, again, all we need to know. This is we've taken arc sine to be the inverse of the sine function. So that means if sine of y is x, then arc sine of x is y. So let's look at the 
last few examples where we're working out inverse trig function values. So let's determine the following. Arc sine of root 3 over 2. Arc sine of root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's supposed to be an angle. So I'm going to think about this in terms of the unit circle definition of the trig function. S this is meaning then that sine of theta is root 3 over 2. Again, I'm using this. All you need to know, this is the relationship between the inverse trig function and the function itself. So if I call this theta, then that means sine of theta is root 3 over 2. Okay, so sine of the angle, that's supposed to be the y value of the point on the unit circle. It's supposed to be root 3 over 2. There are a couple of angles. So that's our height of root 3 over 2. There are a couple of angles for which the corresponding trig function has a value of root 3 over 2. Ah, but arc sine, what's its range? Its range is negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So we're looking for theta in negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So we're looking at this theta. And the y value is root 3 over 2. So here we need to recall, we have some special angles that we know, sine of you know, pi 0, pi by 6, pi by 4, pi by 3, pi by 2. Those are the values, the special values that we should know for our trig functions. And we know that sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. Pi by 3 is in the right interval, so pi by 3 is our result. So that means arc sine of root 3 over 2 is pi by 3. Let's look at the next example. What's sine of sine inverse of one-third? There's a couple ways to look at this. Again, if we look at our unit circle definition, sine inverse is a third. Let's call that theta. So this is saying sine of the angle is a third. What's a third? A third is somewhere down here. So there's a couple of different choices for angles. There's an angle, and there's another angle. Maybe I won't call this other angle anything special because we already know that the angle that's going to come out of arc sine, the, um, the range is negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So it's got to live over here in quadrants 4 or 1. Now I'm going to take sine of that. Oh, well, wait a minute. Sine of an angle is just going to be the height of the corresponding point. So if I start with one-third, the height of one-third, look at arc sine of it, that gives me the angle. Then I look at sine of that, that just gives me the height back again. So this should be a third. Well, that's not surprising because sine and sine inverse are inverses to each other. So one should undo the other one. Here's another way to look at it. I'm going to look at it in terms of our function uh, diagrams where I've got the inputs here. I've just turned the real number line on its head. So there's zero. Um, the first thing that goes in, uh, let's, well, let's say that this is going to be um, arc sine is going in this direction and sine is going in this direction. So this is going to be an interval of negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. And over here, it's going to be from negative 1 to 1. That's the domain of the arc sine function. And so we're just going to play this game. We start with a third. The third is right here. We, sl we throw it into the arc sine function. Where does it land? Well, it lands somewhere over here. Not sure exactly where, but we'll call that theta. What's the next thing that happens? Well, then we take that value and plug it back into sine. Oh, well, that just reverses the arrow and gets us back where we started. So if I start at a third, do sine inverse sine, I just end up back at a third again. Okay, so a couple of visual, visual ways to look at this, but it's really just stemming from the fact that if I start with a value, 
take sine inverse of it and then sine of it. Sine and sine inverse are inverses to each other. They'll undo each other, so you end up with a third. Let's look at the last example. Arc sine of sine of 3 pi by 4. So what's the value? You may be thinking it's 3 pi by 4, but let's just think if that's correct. What is the range of arc sine? The range of arc sine. Well, that would have been the domain of sine. So that's going to be negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. If we thought the answer was to be 3 pi by 4 here, well, that means 3 pi by 4 would have to be the in the range of arc sine. But it's not. It's not in the range of arc sine. So we know this cannot be 3 pi by 4 as an answer. Well, what's the problem here? They're inverse functions to each other. Well, sort of. Remember, arc sine is the inverse function to the restricted sine function. So far, this can't be the restricted sine function here because 3 pi by 4 is outside of the interval that we restricted sine to. We restricted it to negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. 3 pi by 4 is outside that interval. We have to deal with that first. So how do we deal with that? Again, there's sort of these two different perspectives. One is the unit circle perspective. Sine of 3 pi by 4. So 3 pi by 4 is over here. You take the sine of it, that gives us a height. Gives us the, that y value of that point. Now you take arc sine of that. That means you continue on over here and you try to work out what the angle is of this. What's that angle? What's that angle theta? Because that's the angle that's in negative pi by 2 to pi by 2 that has the same sign as three pi, sine of 3 pi by 4. Both of them being whatever this value is at this point here on that vertical axis. So there's this starting with the angle outside of negative uh, pi by 2 to pi by 2 using the sine function to get a height and then arc sine to get it to an equivalent angle that's now in the right interval. Equivalent angle being in the sense that they have the same sine. Okay, so do we know these values? Well, 3 pi by 4. Sine of 3 pi by 4, that has a height of 1 over root 2. So this is 1 over root 2. What's arc sine of 1 over root 2? Well, arc sine of 1 over root 2 is equal to theta, which means that sine of theta is 1 over root 2. What angle has sine 1 over root 2 and lives in the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2? Well, that would be pi by 4. So there's our answer, pi by 4. That's this value here, pi by 4. So that's one way to look at it, using the unit circle definition. And I'd encourage you to make sure you be, you're able to use the unit circle definition. The alternative way to look at it is in terms of these mapping diagrams again. Um, it is helpful to think about it in, in these terms. Maybe I'll go this way with the sine function and this way with the inverse sine function. There's zero, there's zero. Sine goes from the interval from negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. Well, that's the negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. That's the restricted one we're going to look at. And here we're looking at negative 1 to 1. The arc sine's going in the other direction. Now we're starting with 3 pi by 4. So that's out here somewhere. That's 3 pi by 4. When we hit it with the sine, it lands in here at 1 over root 2. Then we take arc sine of it, and arc sine of it has to return it into this interval. So what we have is we need to find the equivalent angle in this interval, negative pi by 2 to pi by 2, that has the same sine as sine of 3 pi by 4 and that's the pi by 4 that we're looking for. These two values map to the same place. 
when we're restricted to look at the inverse function, we only cared about pulling back the values from negative 1 to 1 into the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So we're only interested in the values in the interval negative pi by 2 to pi by 2, which land in negative 1 to 1. And so pi by 4 was our result there. So just to set a point, be aware that you don't just immediately cancel arc sines with sines. You have to uh, take into account where the angle is if the, the sine function is composed with the arc sine and the sines being the one inside. Where is the angle? Is there an equivalent angle that has the same corresponding sine value? So there is some care that needs to be taken here. All right, so that's it for this uh, review section. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.